we have Lynette Kuzma, my uh, good friend from uh, Natural Machines, uh, who is doing 3D food printing uh, with her amazing Fudini machine. I will join, ask her to join. Here we go. Lynette. Hi, Lynette. How are you? <laughs> Audio good. Audio's good. We're all good. Excellent. How is, uh, how is sunny Barcelona? <laughs> You know, nice and sunny, can't complain really. So it's good weather for good. Great, excellent. Well, what I thought I'd do is uh, throw it over to you. I, I guess a quick, I guess, for those of you who just joined us, a uh, quick background. Uh, my name is Chris. I am, uh, I guess, the former CEO of Crush Fit Food and Juice Bars. And I have been spending a fair bit of time in the last few years uh, on food tech in terms of health, wellness, and in, in particular, very interested in personalized food and also Fudini. I've been following what Lynette and Emilio have been doing for quite a while now. Um, and you know, currently you know, involved with a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace platform called Lunch.co, um, and where people are able to do home-cooked meals and share it with their colleagues. Now, I can imagine a situation where everyone has one of your amazing Fudini machines at home and could do some amazing food. So what I thought I'd do is, Lynette, why don't you tell us a little bit about sort of what 3D food printing is for those of us that don't know, uh, so and the current state and what is possible, and we can explore the future and the trends uh, of what. Uh, yeah. What yeah. Fantastic. So thank you very much. So I'm just going to take two minutes, literally, to show you a couple quick photos and videos, so people who don't know what 3D printing is can actually get it. So hopefully you see my screens, my slides on the screen. And, and for those that want to maximize the video, just double tap, double tap on the uh, on the screen with the presentation. Yeah. Right. So this is going to be quick. We'll just do a quick overview. So this is Fudini, our 3D food printer. So our company name is Natural Machines, and we actually make innovative kitchen solutions. 3D food printing is our first released product line. So this is a, just a quick video of how it actually works. Hopefully it's not too jumpy with the uh, things going over the air. But basically what you're doing is you're making your own fresh ingredients, you're putting it into a capsule, you put it into Foodini, choose what you want to print, and you print. It's a pretty simple process, and that's totally by design because we want this to be a very simple process. Now, you can see it again, just a little bit more on the actual print side with, let's see, let's get this. So this is just one print. We sped it up. This is um, our printing dream speed time. <laughs> so this is a bit sped up, but you know, we know 3D food printing has to be fast. This entire printing about five minutes, it's made out of fresh guacamole. Now, some of you might be sitting there thinking, you know, 3D food printing is a crazy idea, but it's really not that crazy because if you think of a food manufacturer, you're practically already eating 3D printed food. They just don't call it that. So what a food manufacturer does is they take food, they push it through machines like you see on the screen here, they shape it, they form it. We took that exact same concept and created a kitchen appliance that we do envision will be in your home kitchen in the future. Today it's in professional kitchens. And now you can see just a range of things we printed. You know, when you're talking about printing things, it's unlimited. You can have designer food, you can have regular food, so all sorts of things. The home use that Chris was talking about, you know, some people think about where everything has to be fancy designs and some of what you see on the screen. And yes, we can definitely do that with 3D food printing and make it more fun, you know, have kids eat vegetables more because we present it in a fun way. But think about things like your basic triangular tortilla chip, right? So this is actually 3D printed, even though it's more 2D. But the whole thing with personalization of food what I can do here is I can actually choose my own ingredients and make it the way I want to, not having to rely on a supermarket package. Now you might say, well, you can do that anyway without a 3D food printer, but a lot of people don't, including myself, because in this particular example, when you're working with doughs, especially very thin cracker doughs, it's difficult to work with to get it really thin and to roll it out on your kitchen counter. And it's too much of an effort. It's easier to go buy the bag unless you have a 3D food printer, then it becomes easier to actually print it. So in this case, this was actually white corn tortilla chips made with white corn flour, water, salt, that's it. Try to find that package in any supermarket. I don't think you will. Mm. And the next generation products we're putting out that will be for home use is actually cooking with lasers. So here you still you see a still shot from that. So it's Yes, it's high tech. It sounds, you know, it sounds cool, and it actually looks really cool when you're looking at it. 
but it's actually a very energy efficient way to cook food and there's a lot of other benefits that go along with that as well. So that's my very short overview. This is what Foodini could look like in your kitchen. This is actual real product, so it's not prototype. We're actually selling globally right now across the world. So it's all real stuff and soon to be heading in your kitchens. Fantastic, that's, a, that's amazing stuff. And you know, I think we've been speaking for a while and, and it's really great to see it all coming to fruition in a way. I guess one of the challenges that you've been saying is it's, you know, people have this concept that it's, it's an easy thing, you know, that expectation that you know, we, we're able to have it today. Uh, or, you know, what, are, what are the realities of um, you know, bringing a product to market like this? Because there's a lot of complexity in that and you're doing something that is really, truly groundbreaking. That's, that's really new. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people have this conception of overnight success, which doesn't really exist a lot in a hardware. So one of the examples I like to bring up is the Nespresso coffee makers that are popular here in Europe. People think that kind of came out of nowhere. We have these Nespresso stores all over the place, and it's in everybody's houses and in all hotels. But that actually started in the 1970s, and people don't realize that. There's Harvard Business Review papers out on that. So it's like, but people don't think, and that's not overnight to me. But mm. even with us, we've been around since 2012, so we've known you for several years, so yeah. I know a lot since we've been doing this, and we're still young. When you look at products that come out in the market, even non-food tech, like if you're talking about Dyson tech, you know, from all the other products they're developing, after they release a product, they tend to release how long it took to get there. And even Dyson, who has a lot of engineers, quite a big budget, you know, especially compared to our smaller yeah. companies, is it still takes them 10 years to get a product out to market. So the laser tech I was talking about before, we actually were working on that for six years now. We started working on it before we released the first product. And a journalist once asked me, you know, oh, it's been six years, why so long? And I started laughing because I was like, that's not long at all. <laughs> you know, yeah. so the industry is still very new. And I actually made note, I was at a Sweden Food Tech Big Meet back in 2017. We actually met up there as well. Mm -hmm. So it's now get back three years later and people who were at that other event might think, hey, you know, it's, it's not mass market yet, so is this game over? And it's definitely not game over. I mean, it's advanced a lot in three years, and you're going to yeah. see a lot more. But it takes time to get to that mass market play. Yes, and I think you know that, that's right, and, and people forget that. And it's it's such a it really is quite groundbreaking. I remember seeing your um, uh, the, the laser machine, and that that really is is game changing because when you start being able to cook as well as print all in one, you really do have a mini factory. You know, and all of a sudden, you know, if you start linking it, I guess, you know, as you will be with, you know, various online sort of resources and so on that you can actually just, you know, press a button, come back after work <laughs> and have a fantastic uh, personalized meal, uh, personal, your, I guess, microbiome, your own, you know, physical, uh, I guess, you know, tolerances and intolerances uh, that, that, that you might have. And, you know, based on the, some of the conversations we've had earlier in the session on this track, around personalized food and, and performance, you know, being able to bring some of this stuff in would be uh, absolutely sort of amazing and, and getting it to the individual sort of level. So Yeah, we're, we're not quite at that Star Trek replicator yet, <laughs> you know, where things aren't going to be quite instantaneous, but we're getting there. But yeah, yeah I, I was in on all the past sessions and they're great sessions. And a couple of notes I took from them is like, there's a lot of talk about cutting out sugar, right? Yes. So we need to lower our sugar in our diets. So, and since this is all about personalized food, you know, it's not just about, you know, when people think about 3D food printing and personalized food, yes, you can in the future, get your food customized to calorie count, mineral count, vitamins, you know, all these other different things that we need. But as in the last talk just said, you know, science needs to get there as well. So it's not just the mechanics of the food processing, it's actually the science as to what do you, Chris, need right now for lunch or what have you, right? So we still need to get there. Yeah. But you can still personalize, not only from the tortilla chip example, but on the sugar track, there's a lot of food manufacturers actually looking at using Foodini and 3D food printing for printing cookies at home. So mm -hmm. cookies doesn't sound too healthy, but you know, we can't eliminate all bad things from our diets. That's not realistic for the world, right? Yeah, but what they're looking at doing. So what they're looking at doing is actually deconstructing their cookies that they make on a manufacturing line and kind of reassembling them in a 3D food printer at home where you do have control. So you can actually mm -hmm. start lowering the amounts of sugar in your cookies slowly over time so your taste buds become used to it. And yeah. I actually did that with my kids uh, just when making cakes for um, happy birthdays and things like that. 
and they can't eat normal cakes really because it's way too sugary which just shocks me because they're still kids and they still love sugar but you can have that gradual decline so it's not like oh here's a sugar cake and here's a non-sugar cake and it's this huge difference in your taste buds just can't compute you know so you can slowly lower that with 3d food printing and customize it and from the food manufacturing standpoint mm. rather than having a manufacturing line that will have to produce 50,000 varieties of cookies they don't need that they can actually do that in your home Great. Yes, and, and I think you know, we, we've, we've got uh, we've got we've got a couple of minutes left. But I think it's what what would be interesting is you know we were talking about sort of like what's been happening with COVID and so on. Yeah, you know, I know that you had a lot of uh, well, your product, you know, Fudini has been in some of the top fine dining Michelin star restaurants, you know, in, in Spain and, and other places. Obviously, that that whole industry, you know, my old F&B industry, has completely been decimated, you know, around around the world, right? Uh, how how have you coped? You know, what opportunities have there been as a result of of COVID? And you know, and how, how has it been supporting, I guess, hospitality? And are there other sort of opportunities there for for food eating? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, the hospitality market obviously took a hit, um, but where there's challenges, there's opportunities, right? So it depends on how you look at things. So again, we're selling globally. So in APAC, for example, in Asia, they're recovering from COVID now in different timeframes than we are here in Europe and in the States. So we're working with major hotel chains, for example, that are looking to bring new things into the hotel that can be customized, can be fun, little treats. I mean, these are kind of like the little joys in life, right? There's a lot of us who are in lockdown or maybe threatened to go into lockdown pretty soon with COVID. So even if it's like a little joyous cookie that you personalize with, you know, something chocolate that you made with on your phone, you know, because you can also do no touch with food me as well. So that's a big thing with food service now or working cool. with food retailers who want to bring more people into the stores. I know there's a lot of tech right now that do a lot of food delivery due to COVID mm -hmm. and that's all you know, going up. But, you know, that hurts the retailers. So they want to have safe ways for people to come in as well. So it's not just all over the air shopping. It's actually getting people in. So there are opportunities there. And of course, you know, that's not our only market. We work in healthcare. Uh, so there's a lot of other markets we work in with 3D food printing. But, you know, the Horeca market is obviously not as strong here in Europe mm -hmm. and in America as it was before COVID. But, you know, there are opportunities there. Great. Well, thank you so much, Lynette. I think. Uh... As it is, it's a pleasure to see you, but uh, it's always short to yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see you very, very soon in real life again. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. Next week in Food Tech in person, hopefully. So exactly. let's see how it goes. Great. Well, thank you so much, Lynette. And uh, we'll see you soon. Great. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Yeah.